Yeah. The Clay County School Board uh, Workshop, December 18, 2018, will come to order. <coughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot to do the invitation, but y'all forgive me. Y'all have a good Christmas and God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Workshop items. Review, review draft agenda for regular school board meeting on January 8, 2019. Mr. Davis? Yes, ma'am. So thank you, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for adjusting the time to be here 15 minutes early. I promise we will have a hard stop today at 10.15 to respect your time. And then some of the individuals have to go somewhere. Before we jump right into it, we'll have some um, recognized of uh, Clay County All-Star Athletes of the Month. will be the first recognitions. We'll transition to C1, which is the minutes for the organizational meeting for November the 20th, workshop for November the 26th, and also a regular board meeting here for December 6th as well. I don't have C1 or 2 on my January 8th agenda. Mine doesn't have C2, C1 or C2. C2. It's is the little plus C3. next to it? Because I've had that happen too, where the whole thing is expanded yeah. except one or uh, two of them. I don't know why. Is that our superintendent? I don't know why it would be. Would it? Jeremy hit mine where it says superintendent. It would be that way. I guess already. It's already in the C1 is minutes. Please stop me as you need. C2 is the 2019 Exceptional Student Education Extended School Year Calendar. This is uh, pretty much the same dates and calendar and locations as we did historically. We just want to bring it to the board in, in order to begin the preparation for 2019 summer school. C3 is personnel consent agenda. At uh, this time, there's nothing that, uh, that raises red flags or that I should uh, that I should apprise you of. Just normal resignation, retirements, transfers, those types of things. C4 is salary schedule adjustments. This is for uh, mis this is miscellaneous for increase of minimum wage. This is the increase in minimum wage by 21 cents from 8.25 to 8.46. Once approved, then we will transition and put motion, make sure this is posted through every one of our facilities. I wish it was more. I know, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here more. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. C5 is out of county travel. As you can see, our uh, NJRPC band, cheer, dance, and drama will be uh, transitioned to a number of events. You see a lot of national events, so we love that Clay County is continuing to have national competitions. And uh, there is one that uh, is in December. It's, uh, this was a last minute uh, uh, championship event that one of our RTCs were eligible to, um, to participate in, but everything else is uh, forecasted for the remainder of January, February, and in March. Okay. C6 is the application to renew the charter school for um, the Florida Cyber Charter Academy at Clay. As, in, as you know, we are required as an organization to have three pathways for um, uh, you know, uh, digital learning. We do have uh, Florida Virtual, we have Clay Virtual, and the, and cyber, and the, and the Cy Florida Cyber Academy will be our third one. Um, this is a five-year contract agreement. Uh, we have to have this by uh, the, via the state. So we want to, this is us bringing this back to continue this body of work. This is, um, right now I will tell you openly that they're going through accreditation and we are, we are given them to a point where in March we'll determine whether or not they have all their recommendation for accreditations in their information materials uh, by, um, uh, by advanced ed. If they do not by March and if approved by the board in January, then we will go out and seek to have a, another um, a digital platform so that we can make certain that we are um, aligned with state statute requirements. I will tell you this openly. They asked for seats to, to move to 600 seats. They've, all, they've only had around 80 to 90 students historically in, in this, uh, in this uh, you know, platform. So what we did in the five-year trend is that for every year progression, we just added 10 seats. But uh, so that we did not give them availability to have 600. They're not actually serving local kids, right? Is this the one that was serving kids from South Florida? Uh, they are serving uh, local kids here as well. So it's just a you know an, an option that that we have to provide. What the, you're, but you would but the one that we remember? had reached out or we were going to reach out and offer <coughs> um, cyber education no, for it, want of a better it was word. Someone who contacted us. From well, somewhere in South Florida, with uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can, look, I can look into. And it I, was, it was like, I can't remember. I can look into. I, I, I thought it was Clay Virtual. Well. 
Yeah. yeah, this this charter school has changed its name. It's still the same or uh, same same board that you dealt with a what, long while back. What was the other name? Uh, cyber or or something yeah. Academy. Of, do you remember? Florida Virtual Academy. And now it's Florida Cyber Charter Academy, but it's still the Northeast uh -huh. Florida. Yes. But they can't serve students from all over the state. Mr. Connor, yeah. yeah. yes, yes, ma'am. Through the chair, they, this, they do enroll students from South. They, they, uh, yeah, they can they enroll. From and, all and, and I remember at the time when it came to us, it was really ringing, and they thought they'd have like 300 students yeah. from South Florida, and apparently it didn't happen. Yeah. But I, would yeah, I think what they were going for, and let me, I'm sorry to uh, just to. Fully inform you going forward in January, and I'll, of course I'll catch uh, a new school board attorney, the old new school board attorney, up on, on, on uh, what I've recommended here. So this is that um, you need to have the three by statute. This is the one of the three that you have now. You've had it since 2014, and mm -hmm. it expires uh, at the end of June 2019. Mm -hmm. It was basically, and this is using my own gut impression of things, I think that the uh, board, the charter organization, was looking to capitalize on open mm -hmm. enrollment. Right. It just wasn't gonna fly because you know you have basically 40 to 60 kids at any time that are your district's uh, uh, students that enroll in it, and there's overhead for every student that's in there, regardless of where, where they come in. So I think that the administration was wise in keeping the numbers you know, in line with the historic enrollment that they've had, regardless of the changes in open enrollment, because it comes, the, the onus is on you, uh, right. this administration, to support it just like any other uh, mm -hmm. uh, school. Yes, sir. So, all that being said, uh, what you're being presented in January is the administration's proposed contract, okay? The administration wants to provide it to the board, get this board's approval, and then send the package to uh, the Florida Cyber Charter Academy for its pr approval of what we've already signed. In other words, here's our signed offer. <laughs> you can take it as is, sign it, and we're all done. Okay. And one very important part, as uh, the superintendent <coughs> just mentioned, is this accreditation thing. We have made it such that if this uh, uh, FCCA, Florida Cyber Charter Academy, does not obtain certification and provide evidence of that to us by, I think it was the March date, all uh, deal, the, the whole deal's off. Okay, so we've got to have that uh, inherent uh, condition uh, in our offer. Right. And they've got to have it bef absolutely right. before uh, June uh, 30, 2019. And, and th thank you, sir. And through yeah. the chair, hence the reason that we're bringing this now, so that we can make certain we can have that conversation with them so they understand our deadlines and understand what we have to accomplish in order to stay, um, you know, consistent with state statute requirements. Will it be another five year contract? Um, yes, ma'am. Do they have a wait list? Mm -hmm. um, right now, I do not believe they do have a wait list. I mean, you said there's just 60? Right now they have around 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. There, there's not evidence. Well, but there's yeah, they, they, we've asked. Maybe because it's virtual. They want 600. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, is, are, they, are they wanting 600 because <coughs> they have kids that want to come in? Or they they, we, we've we've asked for information about uh, potential students, and it has yet to be provided. Okay. Yes. And do also see they have, they have a C rating for the past two years? Yes, ma'am. And the first two didn't even. Yes, ma'am. But we don't have a choice. We have to have it. We, do, we have to have three yes. uh, opportunities for virtual. You know, you have a choice for the duration. For the, that's correct. Mm -hmm. so. All right, C7 is Clay Behavior Center Agreement Contract. It's an annual contract for 1819. This is uh, for the availability for Clay Behavior to service students with disabilities. This is for mental health supports and supplemental district staff. Uh, right now, we also have some uh, great partnership with Right Path through SedNet. So this is just another opportunity for our learners who are under the um, uh, ESC umbrella to be provide services. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir. To the chair, also to remind the, the board, we have two in-house mental health counselors that ESC was able to um, budget for out of their Medicaid dollars. So those individuals, um, we don't anticipate we will need to use outside services nearly as much, but this is a stopgap. Awesome. And, and have we just started that with those two? Is that recent? That this year, this year. That's good, because I know 
we probably all at times hear that the clinic behavioral is so busy yes, mm -hmm. that correct. students That's don't get correct. serviced mm -hmm. quick enough. Mm -hmm. so. We know that the, the contract will be in place because we need it. Um, we also, with, through SEDNET, we work with Right Path, and then um, we also look at other agencies as well to, to fill that gap. Thank you. All right, C8 is our monthly financial reports for November 2018. C9 is our deletion reports. Anybody want a 1982 mower or laptop, uh, you're more welcome, scanners, printers, uh, up to $173,000 for deletion of uh, equipment and uh, materials that are no longer of value, or of value to us for productivity. C10 is a is an award bid for our re-roofing for uh, you know shingles and throughout the district. This is three-year contract for up to five hundred thousand um, dollars. Are we still on hold for identification, Doc? Yes. Okay. And that bid uh, opens when is it? Twelve thirteen. Okay. It's already been. It's already been it's held. Been held. Yeah, it's held during the right? okay. That's seventy-two hours for okay. the bid protest. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so we'll first waiting. Once we get that, we'll update that. C11 is free qualifications for any tractor, any contractors that aspire to work within our organization. <coughs> C12 is our schematic plans for Keystone Elementary School parking lot, uh, pickup parking lot. Uh, thank you for allowing us to, <laughs> to work through identify and purchase that property. This will allow us to have some alleviation for that community, oh. definitely in need. So. Um, we are ready for uh, to move forward with our uh, pavement and parking opportunities within that community. And as, uh, pardon me. Go ahead, and sir. As I mentioned to uh, the superintendent, Ms. Cabot, going forward, one wish that I'd have is for everyone to just be sensitive when it comes to your schematics. The board and this organization has had, a, you know, a, a history of presenting and placing on the public agenda, <coughs> sch agenda schematics, construction schematics, and so on and so forth. Remember with Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, there were more and more uh, protections put in place that allow you to um, keep confidential any elements of uh, building construction and, and security systems. This is not, this is a, obviously yes, a, uh, a, a parking lot, but you're not required and going into the future, you know, just be sensitive to that when you're talking about your construction plans. Yes, sir. C13 is uh, the, is a request for resolution to move forward with a, with a, with a piece of parcel that is, uh, you may want to bring up some of the viewpoints mm -hmm. it's, uh, yes. to see this parcel. There's a one acre parcel that is on the <coughs> back side or the side of uh, Ridgeview Elementary School. This parcel really has been accessibility. Sorry. Yes, That's sir. not on it's our agenda. It is. So this is a, a parcel that's on the back side, uh, are connected to Ridgeview Elementary School. What it was historically used as, as a parcel that we would move um, uh, portables back and forth or have just a accessibility for an easement. We have someone that is, uh, you know, interested in buying this parcel. Uh, we did have the appraisal process completed and it is uh, appraised at $50,000 and we do have an individual that is willing to pay the appraisal price. I just bring this to the board because it was a, you know, a parcel that we don't forecast using and that someone in the community uh, aspired to, uh, to purchase it at the, at the actual appraisal price. So I just wanted this to extend the board to determine whether or not you wanted to move forward with this. Is it, but what if we just own that little strip? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, and the school is the top left corner. No, that's, that's correct. Right. Bridge Elementary yeah, yeah, School. Yes, ma'am. Schools, yes, ma'am. Schools, Bridge Elementary School. So, the left and the right is this gentleman's business. We have a church and a business. And honestly, the the the, the property through the chair, the property uh, was reserved for future use to pull portables or relocatables. As the superintendent says, we've never used it for that. We have Ridgeview High School. We have access on the other side of the yeah, elementary campus. school through Ridgeview High School to pull any future portables. So our team met, Mr. Connell and our team met, we decided that there really is uh, no reason to hang on to that piece of property and it offsets the purchase of the Keystone property, so. Quick question about it, if I may. You've talked obviously to Ms. Roche. Mm -hmm. And is that an area where parents park for a walk up or yeah. parent pickup or anything of that no, nature? Because I know used. that they've rearranged some of that as well. That's correct. It's Just never been used. Certain. So looking at the elementary sorry, school, the what exactly, what section of the school is that where it would have connected? 
in your backup, there is, if you look at the first page of the appraisal, it, it, it kind of, I'm going to kind of show you the same strip right here. You can see it backs up to the very back end of the property where the portables are. Um, that strip right there, and then the other side is the high school. So we'll be able to access all of the, that area if we needed to relocate something in the future. And the kids do go to the high school back and forth. So is that going to get in the way of them yeah, walking? This, this will have no impact with getting back to the Just high making school. making sure. Dr. Kemp, through the yes. chair, is there something that uh, they, they they discussed about they wanted to actually create or build on that on that small piece of? Uh, I think it's the, the think I think the property the property the person who's interested in the property wanted to, to contain and you know, actually get the whole piece. So they're they're that little easement strip. Yeah, makes sense. You know, they're just trying to acquire that for their business. And uh, there's it's, been talk of a camp. I don't want to put out misinformation. But there's been talk of a campers world or an RV something We're not possibly going in there. Okay, I know. Okay, I understand. Yes, and there is there. It used to be a church, and they yeah, tore down right, the church. Right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, because I was I kept trying to figure out where this was because they're also building a whole new subdivision behind um, that area, right. and this is up in the camp. Okay, Got it's it. a very narrow strip of property, yes. so the, you know for mm -hmm. us you'd have to find somebody who wants a seven hundred and forty <coughs> foot by whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's very would probably be very. Simple difficult to sell, you know, if we were trying to sell it actively. So. So, what well, one thing to just uh, chime in here, you normally, uh, I would recommend that you don't uh, add to your public agenda before the closing of a sale of your property uh, to, to reveal the appraisal. That can be kept in confidence for you. It's exempt from public record, the whole thing, until the uh, closing of the sale. Here, the, you're given an appraisal that was actually prepared uh, for the proposed buyer. Mm. So that confidentiality doesn't apply, and it made sense for the administration to add this to the agenda item to fully inform you uh, as to the appraisal. But I guess what they're seeking is our go ahead to continue to move forward. bargaining on this, and so. You're saying no. that you shouldn't have the appraisal. No, I'm saying it's okay to have an appraisal attached to your agenda. Okay. It's not. It wasn't one done for you, and it need not be kept in confidence. This okay. isn't to approve bargaining, though. This is to this approve. Right. Yes. Yes. This is to support the sale. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did one and then two. is special action. This time none. D2 is a public hearing for by uh, adjustments to policy 105 through 113, an organizational uh, school system, along with the pro proposed um, 508, and also additional to risk management. D3 is the hearing for adoption of K-12 math adoption process and materials. Last month we uh, we advertised. This month <coughs> it, is, it is for us to look at the mathematical materials. Um, I will bring a, a PowerPoint real fast, and I will promise I will give it to, to you immediately after this with information related to this, uh, the PowerPoint or related to the, the math adoption processes. And she'll get started. I'll, I'll get started as well. So at the end of the day, you know, what we did was made certain, first and foremost, we, we followed every one of the, the, the processes identified in our instructional materials manual. We identified a pre-selection committee of reviewers that comprise of teachers and district staff. What we did, we allowed principals uh, to identify uh, personnel within their staff to go and, and look through all of the materials that were presented to the district. I'll be open with you. The first time that we did this, we had like a handful between four and five individuals that may not have been uh, selected. So we went back and rebooted it to make sure that we combed through it, that the principals identified a teacher who they were comfortable with to come and vet the materials from, um, from K through uh, 12 in the organization. We also identify committees that work in grade bands, those same com we comprise committees that work in grade bands to review all of the elements and all the contents of the instructional materials rubric. In that rubric, they gave us scale scores uh, that range uh, with the top being 775 scale scores of how they rated on the IMAP process to determine the alignment, <coughs> the coherence, and the focus in mathematical practices. We then identified the top two products and presented these to math teachers across the entire district. Um, we uploaded uh, video modules that, that gave a 20-minute, uh, you know, outlook of what they offered, and we allowed feedback from our our, st our teachers within the organization. I will say that uh, openly that we didn't have, uh, you know, all of our teachers, you know, to respond. 
Yeah, I know they're busy and they're in a practice. And I give you an example for K-5, we only had 44% of our teachers that responded to the survey. <coughs> um, originally it was less and we re rebooted it, tried to get more. No, you're saying, if I'm being quick, Go ask ahead. a question. 44% of all K-12 teachers? No, ma'am. Or 40 per, K 44% of the teachers who, who teach, teach math? Right. That's correct. correct. That's math the in K-5. Yes, ma'am. In K-5. Yes, ma'am. They don't all teach. And, th and then we identified materials that uh, were available to do our community. We, we had three dates for them to come to interact with these materials on October 4th, November 1st, to December 6th. And then we had a final recommendation for the district committee that's comprised of uh, district staff, uh, specialist employees, and principals to look and review the instructional materials manual information. This is how this uh, openly, this is a chart that captures a, the first column, well, the left column from left to right is the grade band. Uh, the curriculum recommendation will be my recommendation as superintendent. And then we look at the teacher pre-selection recommendation, the teacher survey recommendation, the committee's recommendation, and any notes that I found to be, um, you, know, uh, you know, aligned to what my selection process would be. As you can see, uh, right now, for the, the bulk of the materials that we're seeking to, uh, to acquire, my rec recommend to the board, it's all aligned to what the teachers, are, what the teachers and pre-selection, the committees wanted to move forward. The only one right now that we have that, um, that, that I, as superintendent, not, I'm not going, not recommending the first one from teachers, is the Great Minds in K-5. Um, the, the top two um, <coughs> curriculums that were selected by, by the entire committees and uh, by teachers were Ready Math, which is iReady, bringing on a new math curriculum, and Great Minds, which is Eureka Math. Uh, overall, the, this, uh, these two were the top two, and uh, Great Minds with Eureka was the second one, with 44% uh, responding to the survey. And my rationale openly to transition to Eureka and continue to Eureka as a supplement is because Ready Math is a brand new curriculum that has not been research-based or proven in the state of Florida. As a leader, why I, I respect and appreciate uh, you know the voices of, of, our, of our teachers, and I wish all of them would, would have done it because we have 50, I think, what 56 percent that didn't respond. I, I openly am not ready to try a new uh, curriculum that hasn't proven to be you know effective in the state of Florida. Um, Eureka has, uh, in great minds, has been aligned throughout the nation. Um, I will show you that uh, right now within this organization, uh, last year we had 37% of our teachers implemented as supplemental materials. This year we have 82% of the individuals in our classrooms implementing Eureka Math, and that's at their, their own. We have not asked them to do this. We have presented this for them. They have the availability to select their curriculum and push. As you know, we have Go Math right now for implementation. As, as, as you look at around the, you know, around the nation, this is a, a Lafayette, and you can see in the three-year trend from using Eureka Math, it continues to outpace other curriculums that throughout the nation has great alignment. And you see the green through all the, through every grade level from three to eight, which is our accountable and the same that we are within the state of Florida. Are we in our second year with it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you look at the District of Columbia, which is in Washington, they had four schools that used uh, Eureka as well. And from a, from a 14 to, to currently 2017, you see significant growth at their schools. Um, in addition, this is once again in a school in Louisiana that had significant growth. If you look at the green for the national average of what they scored uh, using Eureka versus the national average, they're outpacing it tremendously and, all, and almost uh, doubling the, 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 the rates. Um, and additionally, you see that this is another one in Melbourne, Florida. I think this is Brevard. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is Brevard. You see that once again, you see tremendous growth using Eureka because it really is um, uh, aligned. It's rigorous. The coherence is awesome. Now, we talk about what we're doing in Clay County. Uh, these are grades three through six that we have used last year as some of the materials. The classrooms on the left hand side, Eureka has had significant growth within these classrooms. And on the right-hand side, you see there, there, were, there were in, the, in these grade levels, we had three out of the four grade levels improve, and, and fourth grade declined. But you see that we've had greater growth with the implementation of Eureka. If you haven't been, and I know you've been in the classroom, get a chance mm -hmm. to see the power of Eureka and what it does. The only issues, and I will tell you openly with Eureka, if you're a brand, if you're a teacher for year one teaching Eureka, the first three months are really hard. They are tremendously difficult because you're teaching different conceptual ways of how to apply mathematics. Historically, we all have you know, really computed math. You know, four plus four is eight. But now we're conceptually trying to figure out how you arrived at the answer of eight. 
where in four plus four, how did you get four? Well, now you have two number bonds of two plus two, and you can break that out to, to so many multiple different ways to see how the numbers actually engage in each other. Around the end of uh, mid-October to November, you see teachers starting to have confidence and starting to have great strides of Eureka, and they start celebrating the power in what this curriculum brings in the same mentality for students. Um, but you, I will say, you know, Go Math had some some you know, positives as well. In fourth grade, uh, you know, uh, we had some areas that we could have picked that we had greater areas of movement in Eureka. Ready Math has no data avail available, and I put ever, and uh, they laugh at me because I put that because. If it, I do believe, looking at it, that it's going to be solid. My only question is, I'm just not ready as a leader to take on a pilot at scale with this organization has great momentum instructionally and academically. What's the price tag on the ready math? Um, Mr. Connor, two point three million. So and that's without the professional development, yeah. which is around through the chair four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars more than you would spend in Eureka. It would be about one hundred nine dollars per student over yeah. five years. And then we're having to train our teachers all over again, and our students and parents. It's a whole new family. And, and fortunately, through the chair, um, we have the iReady suite, which has a lot of this uh, ready math lessons in there. I was just wondering, I mean, that, just for consistency purposes, we're right. using iReady right. in other places. We right. are. And, and I do believe that ready math will will be very good. And the teachers did a good job of vetting it. And it's, um, you know. Yeah, the teachers were just given the two choices, right? Eureka or. After the vetting committee, yes, ma'am. Right. And, um, and, and it is. Eureka is just plain mathematical practices where ready math made it, you know, it's colorful, it's, it's, it's interactive, and Eureka is just plain, let's get after it. I mean, but, you know, it's, uh, it, it's been You're proven. You're also talking K through five. That's correct. Which yes, is colorful and interactive. I, I agree. Yes, and needs to be, and, and a couple of concerns about Eureka. Yes, ma'am. There have been teachers who dropped Eureka or chose not to do it this year because they were inclusion teachers. And they felt that their ESE students were not able to get right into it. And sometimes that colorful, that, that sure. interactive is a little bit, is more appealing to the students. From a Go Math standpoint, we were thinking outside the box within Go Math. And just another statement about Go Math, they didn't stay up with obviously the standards that we were given by the state. That's accurate. And in looking at the standards, Eureka, yes, does meet the standards, but it's, and I and here again, <coughs> for an old dog who was sure. teaching math, it's difficult to under it's difficult obviously to get into a new program. Number one, number two, it's when you're teaching it in such a way that a lot of parents and a lot of teachers don't see their children all understanding it in the first go round. Eureka is a program that comes back and comes back and reteaches and reteaches. That was hard for me to see in the classrooms that I visited yes, because I was walking around going, wait a second, this kid didn't get it and that kid didn't get it and this way. And the teacher just moves on. And it, it's a feeling, it's sort of a feeling from a frustration from a teacher perspective yes, because you want all of your children, to, all of your children to learn it. But understanding and talking with those teachers and understanding that, okay, it's okay because we're going to come back to the same idea or the same um, standard a week from now and then again three weeks from now and again and and it is true that kids all of a sudden when that light bulb goes off it's like wow I get it and it, that's that builds on that but mm, yes, ma'am. for the I've K through five so teachers it, that bothers me a little bit. <clears throat> I've heard so many um, parents and teachers yeah. rave about Singapore math and I've always wondered why we never have considered that as a district. Um, I can speak just Go a little ahead. bit to the chair. Um, just, first thing we always look at in curriculum instruction is alignment. And when you look at the ratings for Singapore math, they rate very poorly as far as what they report says <coughs> is coherence and right. uh, rigor and all of that. So and when we're talking alignment, you're, we're talking to the state standards. standards. Yes, yes ma'am. State standards. State standards. So when we talk about alignment, so edreports.org rates every one of the curriculums, and as Mr. Connor said, some, some apply, some do not. If you look at focus and coherence, and coherence is, does it, do the standards build upon each other? And we talk about that, do we see a spiral progression of what third grade is, is teaching a fourth grade and fourth grade to fifth grade? Mm -hmm. So what we look at, if we look at a vision, I only put Go Math on here because what we have historically adopted and used um, you know, in, in the past and currently, and then a vision's math. And you see Eureka continues to have great focus, it's aligned with standards, the coherence is beautiful in, in relation to that spiral curriculum and knowledge, it builds upon one concept to another. 
it would relate to mathematical practices from K through 8. Um, and overall, it has 126 value points. It's around 125. And the, re and the reason Envision only has 84 because it doesn't have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade uh, curriculum tied to it. And Go Math was uh, was underrated as well. If you look at the, the rigor, is it really complex mathematical task every single day? Uh, Eureka continues to be aligned from K to eighth. Uh, as you see, there's uh, some partial alignment with Go Math. And it rated 144 out of 162. And the usability, um, while it may be somewhat complex, uh, the usability is, uh, you know, has greater um, usability related to other uh, content areas. And um, it, it scored, uh, you know, above its uh, counterparts. And overall score is really, truly one of the best and greatest alliance curriculums to, to what Florida Standards has. As it relates to our teacher resources, there's a number of resources we can provide educators. Pacing guides, preparation guides, uh, curriculum overviews, ch ch check sheet, standard check sheets, uh, using Khan Academy as their online platform in a, in a way. We have a true professional development, online communities, or PLCs for our teachers. Stern Learn is pretty much a platform and grade level. Um, Eureka Google Classrooms could be, uh, you know, continued throughout the school, through our school district for teachers. And 82% of our teachers are already using it in, the, in this, and they will continue our momentum. Go back to the iReady platform okay. and that curriculum. Okay. And, the, and here again, from a teacher perspective, you're, you, not you, yes, but the county, the state, whatever, the county is, is voting on, we are voting on a curriculum that we're going to use in the classroom. And the K-5 to teachers, and I realize only, for, I, unfortunately, only 44% of those math teachers voted, which is unfortunate because if those that small group um, said no just and maybe they were the ones that felt the strongest about it who yes, knows but the K through 5 having that all that platform of I ready there required as part of the math curriculum if I'm not mistaken yes, then uh, going through with that particular curriculum to me would make sense as a teacher saying, well, look, we're already using use it. it. We're I already required to use it. So why can't we just use this, even though it doesn't have all of the data behind it? We're going to have this program for six years. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I can see where teachers feel, this is where I want to go because I'm already using this. This yes, is something that I've already learned. I've already implemented right. it. And so now you're going to impose another, and although a lot of our teachers have used Eureka, um, whatever we decide, just I can't encourage us enough to say, not just the, the classroom teaching or the, the training of Eureka right. in a closed setting at the TTC, yes, but if we can somehow build into it the training of teachers going into other teachers' classrooms yes, to watch it and practice. I, I agree with you. That's, that's, and, that would be huge. And, and through the chair, I, I don't disagree. So right now, we, we will continue to use iReady for a Tier 2 uh, opportunity for small group instruction to differentiate instruction every single day because it has beautiful learning paths and meets to learn where they are from the readiness levels. You know, the only thing is that Eureka has been, Great Minds has been out there for, I want to say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they've already, they've already filtered through the, the gaps and the problems. So their curriculum is pretty solid. It's not going away. It's really truly aligned. What um, Ready Math is, since it's being brand new, they're going to identify, we're going to learn along the way the next couple of years of what the problems are, where the gaps lie. So, um, I, you know, that means that we have to go back and rewrite curriculum guides, assessments alignment, exit tickets, uh, essential learnings, and, and do all those things. And I think great um, uh, Ready Math can, can do that in the next three or four years. And as our time comes up for, for another adoption process, if it proves competence, I'd be willing to have, if I'm superintendent, I'd be willing to have the consistency of both of those being aligned. And this adoption is for five years? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and this... And my apologies, this should say uh, parent resources. And one of the biggest things you see in, in, with Eureka is that some of the parents are, are struggling to be able to mm -hmm. assist. So we have to have, we have to grow greater legs in our community <coughs> to help our first educators as our parents. So we have parent tip sheets of how to use this, how to understand modules. We will upload free module videos so they can see what they're working on for that week or, or for that three to seven days or 10 days so they can interact with it. We will have family nights, not only at school levels, but throughout the district. We can use uh, Khan Academy as well. We have grade roadmaps that will help them through the process. 
and we will provide homework helpers before, during, and after school to help students continue to learn. The ex and, and then we always have uh, Zern Learning platforms as well to help. But we will be consistently, as we are now, and even better, diligently making certain that we help our first educators with this process. Do we have parents taking advantage of um, assistance now? Um, we have. We mm -hmm. we. One thing we want to do is have a homework hotline. I know I spoke about that a while back. We need to probably put that in practice to really have better assistance to have, especially from K-5 to mathematics and that. But we do have modules we are uploading now. Tiffany, anything mm -hmm. you want to? Um, there's parent tip sheets on there that we share out by module that they get to help with their homework. Parents are going online to Zern. Zern mm -hmm. takes Eureka and puts it for them right on the computer. It's the exact process that they're doing in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, multiple schools are having parent nights where they're coming in, they're learning the math, they're practicing it, they're going home with their kids and doing it. Um, the classroom visits, we were setting those up so teachers, administrators, and parents can come in and go see what that looks like in the classroom. Um, it's really growing. Mm -hmm. And and even if it wasn't Eureka, it's this it's math is different than we learned. So the okay. process, no matter what curriculum we're gonna take, although this one does the it's best job math. at breaking it down. <laughs> um, it felt like every mm -hmm. two years we were getting new math. Though, yeah. And, and well and that's my changing it so much, I think yeah. was really right. and, and frustrating to parents and, and teachers. And through the chair, Ms. Kerrigan is exactly right. And I would say that especially in secondary. Secondary um, adopted Carnegie. And I will be honest with you, the, the teacher didn't want it, didn't like it, it was their problem and they didn't use it. Mm -mm. So they were they were That's chasing right. a band-aid to try to fix it. So you're absolutely correct. And we really don't have a staple for what we're doing in secondary. This gives us some true leverage of identifying curriculum for for the entire organization from K-12. And teachers are ready for, um, especially in the secondary, for a stable curriculum that we can implement. This will be around $3.8 million uh, for five years. Uh, within our budget and, it, and it's broken down um, by uh, by grade level. Mr. Mr. Connor's done a, a masterful job of working through this process. He's still working on quotes because we're trying to take that number down as often as much as we can um, for and, and prepare for implementation if approved by the board. You can, you can. Mr. So one of the things too regarding uh, the teachers at the sixth grade level really they voted Pearson as their number one choice and so uh, in talking to some of our math specialists and talking to the teachers, we are looking at possibly adopting for the sixth grade advanced students the Pearson, which will be a great gateway into the Pearson product as they go into seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. Overwhelmingly at the secondary level, Pearson was the winner. And yeah. so we're looking at that as, as adopting sixth grade advanced Pearson. So, so through the chair, you know, so K through five, it was uh, Eureka and um, in, uh, in ready math, but in sixth grade they wanted Pearson. The problem is, is that when most of these uh, curriculums are, are developed, mm. you know they're developed in the mindset that sixth and seventh, and eighth, sixth and seventh and eighth grade are in in middle schools. Yes. We don't have middle schools, so we have K six. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense for us to have the same consistency for foundation of the core curriculum that we adopt. However, there are pockets such as uh, you know advanced sixth grade math that we want to be able to select that will have a greater uh, gateway in, in, uh, through and transition and through uh, to our junior high schools. We do have pockets though, I mean good points when we talk about we have accelerated learners for advanced, we have some schools that are doing a really good job that we will allow them to use some of the materials through the process that we can help them through, um, through implementation. We also may look at some, uh, some additional needs for um, students with disabilities if there is something that, uh, you know, some of the materials that we can bring that's more uh, attractive for the learner. So. Our biggest thing is, and I know you can appreciate it, we want to make certain that we provide um, a line curriculum that where students are going to be assessed on, it meets the level and the spirit of the standard. So we, can, we, we have to have a point where they have tier one, this is what they're going to be assessed on, but at the same time have tier two and tier three assess, uh, curriculums to help them bridge the gap to accelerate the learner every single day. Quick question yes, about sir. the articulation between fifth grade, or K through five, and then going into the junior high. And this is something I'm not familiar with, with the um, Eureka. Do they yeah. really build the multiplication charts and the multiplication understanding? Because the biggest frustration that we would have 
as fifth and sixth grade yes, teachers is talking with the seventh and eighth grade yes, teachers, coming back and saying, your kids don't know yes, how to yes, add, subtract, multiply. So through the chair, I'll say this. If you, when you go and, and you go and watch Eureka, you'll see they'll have fluency sprints mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. And fluency sprints is where they take, you get like, let's just say 40 or 50 questions, uh, you know, they get on the sheet of paper. That's they get I one minute seen. to practice, whether it be addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. And they, have, and, they, and they have to cycle through it one minute. They stop, they figure out how many they got right, and then they go back and they sprint again and see if they can beat what they currently continuously got right you know, from the first time. So it is embedded throughout Eureka, which is working on the foundational skills that I agree with you That's that could be alarming. Huge, yes. Sorry. And it's frustrating from a teacher's perspective, perspective because you know they knew it. Yeah, they when they left your class. That's one of the favorites. They in, did not. Through the chair, it's one of the favorites that kids like about Eureka the Sprints. Uh -huh. they and love the fluency it. activities. That's Every day they go through mental math where they're decomposing numbers. That when numbers I saw. That was just Kids really are cool. interacting Perfect. with numbers in a way we mm -hmm. haven't seen before yeah. in our yeah. county through this. It's really fascinating. The mental math is yeah. awesome. And, and yeah. I'm sorry, I will send this out to each of you right directly after this meeting so you'll have. And, um, you know, please feel free. And Ms. Pyle. Ms. Pyle, yes, ma'am. Ms. Pyle will get it. All right, thank you. And uh, D4 is uh, for public hearing approval for a new, pro uh, new proposed policy of 1.14 uh, with religious expressions in public schools. And we had a question about that at the last school board meeting, and I don't know if we specified that this is um, from the legislature that we have to adopt this. I think we did. Did we? I, I don't we recall. Did. Do I, I do not remember. I, do, I remember Mr. Christian mentioning that. I don't know yeah. what we never. I didn't. I don't remember hearing that we responded to his comment. So I don't. Not that we. Yeah. yeah. So the statutory changes have been in place, right? And then everyone. We when I say to, everyone. Yes. All the school yeah. board attorneys around the state were waiting for the model policy. Right. So did anyone talk to that person? I did. He left before the end of the okay. meeting. So. Okay. So the model policy if, came I'm in. I'm just saying, if it yeah. comes up again, we may yeah. have to say this just is a statutory requirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good thing. All right. I, I've got to say this, going back to the math, I am amazed at how much research and work and the um, data from the different school districts. Um, there's got to be something good with this. Um, I know I was trying to help my mentee with math one time, and the principal walked through the uh, media center, and I just said, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> but that's because I'm just like a parent. And, you know, my daughter in Atlanta, what am I supposed to do? So I'm, I'm really glad that you're making it available for the parents to learn and, and you know, uh, when we were in school, it was wrote, you memorized the lines. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you just wrote. Mm -hmm. But and, even, uh, even, with go math, even with Go Math, I mean, I taught. And remember the class? I remember how many different ways of division mm -hmm. we taught. Mm -hmm. I want to say like four or five mm -hmm. different ways to divide, mm -hmm. and I thought. I, yes. I don't remember, remember the basic way. That was so the, confusing. I remember the, the flash card. Oh, we still use <laughs> every night. Sure. We, we do the flash cards. Over so they don't do that anymore. But no flash cards. I mean, just look at your multiple. Drill and practice. I still like flash cards. Yes, ma'am. As I just said, drill and practice. There we go. And we and we learned amazingly. We learned. And we would teach this. I mean, I would tell my children. But I was now. Remember, when you go home, your parents have never learned. Right. So if they want to teach you a different <coughs> way, let them. Don't get angry. We'll learn it here in class again. Needless to say, I never broached math again with my mentee. To say, you know, two plus four. I mean, I was like, what? Yeah. It's fascinating. That they did. But I'm fascinated that y'all have got a handle on it. Mr. Davis, before you go on to the next yes, thing, um, I just wanted I don't personally <laughs> I just wanted to make a board member remark in case at 1015 when I have to leave and you're still going um, because this is so what are we two and a half almost three weeks before the agenda I actually have an item that I'm going to add to the agenda but two weeks is Christmas Day and so I just wanted to let everybody know that I'll be sending it and adding it sometime in the next week and it's just about 
the school safe dance. Yes, I wanna, it's a discussion item only for us to discuss. Yes, ma'am. So I just wanted to okay. be transparent. Can, may I, oh, well, can I ask if it's talking about what our plan is for next year? Well, it's it's a couple of options. It's it's discussing what the options are. Yes, I just want to discuss it on the on the board floor because I'd like to get some information from the superintendent. Okay. Because I have asked. Not, well, I have asked action. for information. No, it's just a discussion. It's not to take I action. Just, just I understand, yes. but I just wanted to remind you that I had asked for a workshop regarding the same. Yeah, and I think in January. what you were thinking is different than what I'm thinking. So to the I chair. I don't know though, just going by what you said to on the board floor, you know. And, and so to the chair, I will work with Mrs. Bush to, to, to look at calendar times. But I'll be mm -hmm. open for whatever y'all, you decide you need to do. after we discuss whatever I'm going to put on, if you want to have a workshop at that point, you know, we can go forward with it. But there's information I'd like him to get for the board. So. Okay, because that's, I have asked So is the discussion well. about doing something workshop, different than definitely. what we're doing now? Maybe. Different plan. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a different plan. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait and see. So I'll, I'll, well, you'll see. Then I'll send it and everybody will see what it is. But okay. it's just. Yeah. I'll be ready. Wait, I'm, I'm done. You're, hey, good good work. Um, there's no one here from SESPA or CCEA, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't want to overlook those okay. And uh, school board attorney, do you have any comments? Nothing further. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that. He's a short timer. This dude. I'll be here all week. This guy. He's out of here. He's got boxes are all over the place. <laughs> okay. Um, school board member remarks. Any? Okay, then this. No, no, no. We're not done because we're following this. Oh, I've got to go through all this. Potential <coughs> edgy point partnership. Mr. Davis? Okay. All right. I don't know. So we're going to transition now to the workshops? Yeah. It's still on the same we're, agenda. Okay. Uh, it's still on the same agenda. agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So, thank you. So, as you know, um, I wouldn't bring anything to this board that isn't really combed through and uh, doesn't make sense to this organization. Um, right now, you know, this conversation right now for the next 20 minutes, we're talking about focus. And focus has been our uh, body of work for our, student, our school information system for the last six years. It is uh, it has met our needs uh, as related to what we're trying to accomplish with uh, you know data mining being the hub for information uh, you know having avenues for teachers, but um, I've come across a you know an educational platform oh I just lost my PowerPoint but educational platform that I believe <coughs> that can stretch us and really improve upon the practice and the work related to um, our student informational system in uh, in, in Clay County. Um, today I want to welcome Mrs. Uh, Ms. Chris Moss is our chief sales, the chief sales and marketing officer from uh, EduPoint, along with Mr. Will or Rob Wilson, who's the president and chief innovation officer. I like that title, innovation <laughs> officer. <laughs> you know, it's uh, from EduPoint here today that will um, participate and help us through this. Um, this, this I know, I'm thinking allocation. That. I know, right? Here it is. See a new I, job description. I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're <laughs> the cookies, so, Sherry, when you guys <laughs> tell them no. <laughs> Superintendent no. and then innovation. innovation <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I'll show you the job description. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at the end of the day, you know, you may ask yourself, you know, why would we want to transition to something that's so massive? Mm -hmm. You know, because it really is an undertake for us to look at uh, our whole hub for all of our analytics to, um, to to disrupt the way teachers and students are interact with our new platforms. But I have to tell you, after looking at EduPoint. It is the it, it is a world class experience. When, when you see this um, uh, this opportunity, this information system, it just goes over and beyond what Focus or anything that I've ever seen able to, be able to do. It not only manages data but improves the accuracy and simplifies the work for increasing our productivity. Not only from the district perspective but a school's perspective, a stakeholder perspective, and a student's perspective as well. It offers a beautiful suite from a teacher view portal, which provides a number of uh, classroom um, you know tools for them from grades to look at um, the way they interact with students from classroom management to communication protocols and at the same time it provides uh, a robust analytical uh, suite that allows us to look at extensive reporting now and for us to synthesize and analyze data points to identify trends and patterns become more efficient as an organization you may ask why right now because focus contract ends July 1 2020 and um, if, if we decide to move in the direction of a new platform, we want to make sure that we have sufficient time to really work out kinks, to plan, to communicate, 
to bring all the parties on board so that we can have extensive professional development to make sure that we are prepared if we, if we decide, you decide as a board, that we can transition to a new platform. And the projectability would be to go live in, in, in summer 2020. And the financial savings of this district over the next five years would be around $1 million or above um, to the organization related to. How long have we been with Focus? Uh, the, this is our sixth year. Sixth mm -hmm. year. Yes, ma'am. And I remember when Focus came in, um, lots of companies. Lots. I don't think But I don't think oh, we're but still. We left a, a dinosaur program we to did. go on the yeah. Focus. We did. Ms. Buckley, do you say that? Through the chair, do you, that is correct. Um, and, and I want to bring up a word that is, I'm going to bring up a comparison that might at first be a little odd. What I don't want to do is we have another couple things beyond what this slide says. In five years, a few people might know the name Bruce McGuffey. Mr. McGuffey will be leaving the district through drop in five years, mm -hmm. which means we better have our stuff in order before we lose right. the mm -hmm. most important institutional knowledge on that side. So everyone, a lot of people are shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. So we have very precious time left with Mr. McGuffey. So standing up a product. So this is not just choosing EduPoint. This is choosing how long we will be staying with right. focus can't bring someone in and ask them to switch their first three years because they're barely scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other part of that is exactly what was just mentioned. The business plus conversion is because the terms to business plus conversion is 13 years late. Yes. I don't want to do that again. Right. Well, for example, I switched my, two of my previous districts off 13 years ago off terms in the Skyward um, on the financial side and we went to the student side. But in that time frame, I don't want to revisit the business plus conversion again. So I want to do it while Bruce is here and I want to do it with a great system. And to be honest, I think they're going to prove they're a great system. I agree. Um, so is this really user friendly mm -hmm. for our teachers to yeah. have you know, easy access? Will, yes, the, will yes, the turnover be difficult? No, as a matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quote, so I don't even I'm going to quote somebody, I just don't remember who it is, so forgive me. The teachers will think this is focus version 10. Yeah, it's so. that close, but well, the interactivity is unlike anything you've ever seen. But as far as that first grade book view, if you're talking about just using the grade book, it's still just a grade book. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But so, everything else around it mm -hmm. is what makes right. this and, special. And this is, in Ms. Kierkegaard, to your point, to the chair, this was the, the biggest thing that we had to determine. How will this function with our teachers? And it has the greatest accessibility to it. If we look at this, this we talk about Discover and Power for Clay County. These are all the, the, the functionalities within EduPoint and Synergy uh, educational platforms. It looks at our informational system, to learning, to technologies, to ESC, to RTI, to analytics, to parent and, and student, to accessibility through mobile apps. It brings all of these components together within, under one umbrella. As we look from a teacher's perspective, and it's a, good, it's a great ask, it should be always the first ask. Right now, teachers are having to go to multiple places to, to upload information or review information. We have Focus is our SIS. We have Gradebook, which is as another uh, Focus also has our Gradebook. But then we have ESC, we have to go to STAR. And then we have Performance mm -hmm. Matters for our assessments. And then we have an MTS. MT, it, so we're all over the map of trying to figure out all these solutions for teachers. And Synergy Educational Platform transitions to all of this and more into one platform. So it's easy accessibility for our teachers. And this really allows us to have a mainstream, consistent data hub where teachers have to have indirectly a one single sign on and they can interact with all of these components within the organization. The Mr. important piece of that is everyone wants their scope to be as narrow as humanly possible. The deeper the dive, the less the professional development across multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. We would be shutting down for the professional development who's sitting behind you. We'd be shutting down multiple avenues of professional <coughs> development for teachers and focusing into a singular system. Oh. Yeah, which is which is which is time consuming. So we talk about teachers. It's more <laughs> functional uh, right now. What this will do is platform a two-way Google Classroom integration, so they no longer have to upload double grades. So if they're double graded in Google, then they're double graded in Focus. Now it all merges one into one. There's a greater mobility app for teachers, parents, and students to have accessibility through communications. Um, what EduPoint does, it just doesn't put analytics for grades, but it gives them a beautiful imagery graphs so they can see and some, you know, to, to make differences and to compare. It has an awesome dashboard for test scores, IP, excuse me, 
help students when you bring up Addison Davis, his entire platform is there that they can interact with. And it gives them a PBIS support. This is well, you know, all about page behavior, positive behavior supports. This is what Macaulay's been trying to implement in this organization for the last two years, and it gives it a, at, the, at their fingertips to use for their interface and, their, and it gives beautiful opportunity for them to look at analytics to really go ahead and comb and identify how to differentiate instruction opportunities within within this platform. Um, these are just some of the, I know these didn't come out the way it should, but some really the visuals that it has from our gradebook to Google to assessments. It allows them to drill down the top right to a, uh, an item analysis for our kids, um, you know, within the top right, but it just gives them so much more uh, you know, accessibility and visuals through this platform. Um, this is again RTI, if you look at the learner, the way their assessment scopes, their growth, their energies, what classes they are taking, um, you know, where they are from a, P a positive behavior support sort of platform. So it gives them a, a number of, of, of avenues to, to look and interact with, um, uh, with this platform. How does this uh, benefit parents? Because the next question is, is, is it going to be easy accessible for our parents? Or are we going to have a bunch of CRs that you're going to get emailed about often? And I can tell you this is, uh, we will do our job to coach parents of how to interact and use. But this is greater accessibility. The, the, the app is better. The porters, uh, portal is, is better. Right now, you've got to drill down for your grades, and it, it's just at a fingertips uh, you know, uh, touch. Quick yeah. question yes, about parents. Will they have to learn how to sign on again? It'll to well, go from focus to this because it took years, literally, <laughs> it, to it, get parents to start using focus. It, it did take years, and what we'll do is we'll replace the application. It, I'm not going to say the application interface, but because the parents are using mm -hmm. what They're is set up with in, us, right. that will migrate into here. So it'll be more of instead of retraining them, it'll be repointing them. Okay, and the, here again, part of that. A parent's not going to have to come into the school during that migration uh, to be approved. If we've already verified, into, yes. well, then we've already verified. Right. A verification is a human verification, Correct. and how we input that into the system is something completely different. I'm not going to ask the parents who've already been verified to come back. Right. I agree. That's I'm <laughs> thinking about. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We finally do it at them. School, they yeah. all know. Right. They all know how yeah. to do it now. <laughs> I do, I do want to comment, it looks like you've done your homework again, um, which we expect and always get. My board is very but, sophisticated. But also, I do like the idea that it will save us money and that it looks like a very effective program. I am curious, though, how many districts in the state of Florida mm -hmm. use this? Yeah, so this is a good question. Where This is a little bit different than when we talk about curriculum. This is no one in the state of Florida is, has used this. We are, it's us and another uh, county that are kind of, you know, trying to rate, not race, but What other county? Um, can I say that county or no? No, sir. It's this is you can't. This is a publicly yeah. broadcast. Oh, okay. 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 So, no, all right. So, I didn't ask that. Yeah. yeah. So, that but, we're getting a discount. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting. I got a good smile for that. So, <laughs> so good. <laughs> so this is like a. We are kind of getting yes, pilot. We could be, and, and I will tell you. So as I, in the next couple slides, I can go through. That's a good question and answer to both of y'all's answer. Be yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Buckley. Yeah, we we are the state of Florida pilot, but if you would humor humor the rest of the presentation, I think you'll see while we will be the state of Florida pilot. They exist in. 20 other states. 20 other okay, states. that makes me feel better. I was starting well, to, in, including California, which has the most difficult, the most difficult state reporting to my knowledge. Okay, okay. so yeah. you're going to cover oh, yes. a lot of this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma so, uh, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Iannone. Very good. Yeah. Oh. She just got married, so. Oh, nice. Jamie, congrats. Congratulations. Congrats. Uh, has used this in her former life as well in Georgia. Oh, what part of Georgia? <coughs> Big. Oh, okay. I know we're Cobb County. Yes, so, I, I moved from Atlanta. <laughs> and, for, and for parents' perspective, they can go on and look at grades, uh, history, academic history, and they can also print out unofficial transcripts and update any demographic information. And then the, one of the beauty things, if we look at controlled open enrollment, this will allow us to have online registration for controlled open enrollment versus oh, doing a you know, 1982 Google, Google Doc where they have to fill out oh some bits. And uh, so it benefits. Uh, and this is just some of the platforms that we'll go into it. but. Benefits for students, uh, you know, gives them their own mobile app that they can uh, that they can coach and go through and, and interact with. Look at their grades, their test scores, their student behaviors, their grad tracker, and we want to put in a what if an, you know analysis for the grade predictor. So if a teacher gives 
15 assignments that's going to be for the entire year for their syllabus. They can go in and calculate what grades they need to get in order to obtain the A status and, and earn it. And you know a. there are students who are going to do that. I know that. Oh would. my gosh. I think I love it. I would have. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there might be students that just need They want to get there. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, there were, there were I say this. Courses. The biggest yeah. thing is I thank them for you see. even looking at it, you know. <laughs> so if they can register with courses. They can look at, submit assignments and communicate with, um, with, with their teachers. And this is some of the attractiveness of, of what they offer it's, it's and so one thing that we did and, and you know that I wouldn't bring this to you if it wasn't really uh, reviewed we put together a number of teams I me and my team have reviewed it ESC staff has reviewed it we've got teachers we've got uh, Mrs. Pivo on board to review us um, core IT groups state reporting teams administrative users we put our best in, in front of EduPoint to really poke holes poke the bear to figure out what we can do to get better and does it make sense after all this analysis, openly we agree that this is, could, has the potential of being a national model. Um, it, it, it is really a, a solid product, even though it's not in Florida. Um, as it relates to Florida, we would be the first uh, partnership to be implemented in Florida, which means, you're, yes, correct, we would get a, there's a discount <laughs> immediately through this process, uh, through licensing discount. Um, no cost to tool, uh, tool How many kits. years does the discount continue? <laughs> <laughs> um, the oh, contract is a five-year contract. Yeah. So it would be a five-year contract with yes, a focus for six. So. Uh, we get discounts on professional services, hosting data, and additional as uh, you know continues to grow. Go ahead, Jeremy. I don't want um, on a on a technical aspect. I, I don't want to overlook the importance of Bullet Three. When we go to make changes to software, owning the source code means we don't have to go back to the company and say we need you to create this and then create a scope of work where they charge us money. Owning the source code means we could create our own modules later down the road without the dependency of the company. That is very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, and then you know, there's potential of uh, continued... Uh, Wait a minute, back up to that last slide. I want to say that again. There's continued us being a flagship account, and then, and then as, as it grows, there's, a, there's availability for us to continue to have um, you know, to save more money, I would say. So that's a, an opportunity. If this is very successful, that's right. that we anybody else's will be getting things. some discounts. But yes, well, from and visitors from other counties. Right. Too, for sure. That's right. That's and but that's also important because that's we only need a few of the big seven to go that way, and, and an all red we would be ten percent cheaper than Focus as we currently pay. We would be ten percent less expensive. Than focus. than focus in 2020. Well, if we were to redo that, not 2020 uh, after right after right. these would apply. But this doesn't take effect until summer of 2020. This is on we top of the focus cost, yes, ma'am. So, like, right. they match focus. This is additional savings beyond if another company, correct, our school district, not another school district. This comes is in addition to the one million on the other slide. Right. And when is our contract with Focus expire? 2020. July 1, 2020. So we'll have an overlap of how long? They all cost me. If, we, we'll if you said today, start. then it would be about 18 months. You'd be talking one school year where we'd have to mm -hmm. pilot to, to get it correct to make sure that the state reporting, because state reporting is obviously yeah, major, major, major for our funding. Money. Yes. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you for the state reporting, I wouldn't even move forward with the conversation. So their CTO and their Three or four of their state reporting team flew out right. for this conversation. And you need at least a year to do the piloting? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I would not feel we, comfortable. We through the kinks. I would not feel comfortable advising the board mm -hmm. before that. I mean, ultimately, our FTE means more to me than anything yeah. else. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Finance finance spends the budget, FTE garners mm -hmm. the, the budget. Okay. So mm -hmm. we, we need right. that time frame. And so we between the contracts important. Yeah, Thank and, you. and through the chair, we would we would be able to eliminate other like STAR and other programs that performance matters potentially to save money through um, through this as well. And I'm going to hand this over. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to, to to talk about who we are and, and entertain the thought of bringing synergy here to uh, to Clay County. Our, our core leadership's been together over 25 years. Uh, which is unique in technology. It's extremely mm -hmm. unique in vertically oriented technology companies such as ours. Where uh, was your, 
we, we have two offices. Arizona is our largest office. Our corporate offices are in California. Chris and I are both out of the uh, Arizona office. Uh, for us as an organization, there are many other players in the, organiza in the, in the market at large that, that, that do many different things. We are 100% laser focused on student data management. Everything in, of, and around student technology and, and the tracking of student uh, data is what we do. Uh, that, that's important when you look to embrace a, a partner moving forward. What is their focus? Our focus is in student uh, data management. This kind of uh, shows a little bit of our, our growth over time. We're pretty proud of uh, our steady growth. We are not looking for a quick dollar for us. Everything we do is strategic. And so today we're at about 4 million students served across uh, 20 states. And as you see, we don't, many of the other players that are national players in the market, they go chase every single state for us. It's very strategic. It's important when you are looking at who is going to be your partner. Currently you had uh, a focus for, for six years. You have focus uh, currently <coughs> going to your sixth year. You had terms, I'm guessing, probably for 15 or more years uh, prior to that. So anyone that you're, you're looking at, how can you leverage this technology platform moving forward for the longest period of time? Because as, uh, as, as Superintendent Davis mentioned, this affects every single person in the education community, students, parents, teachers, administrators, board members, and, and beyond. So what's absolutely critical is, is the approach of the organization that you're going to partner up with. Our approach is to, is to strategically pick states that we know are going to serve our long-term interests. Uh, we are not looking, if, if we thought for a second that Clay was the begin and end of our presence in, in Florida, we probably wouldn't be as interested. We see Clay and Superintendent Davis and, and the team as the visionaries uh, being able to adopt it and willing to, to take that uh, first step with us. But for us, we're looking to bring our solution uh, in, into the state of Florida uh, pretty significantly. So this is kind of enumerating some of our key accounts. We, we have some, mm -hmm. some, some large districts. Mm -hmm. uh, Gwinnett and, and Fairfax. Fairfax is a beacon district, mm -hmm. as is Gwinnett uh, in, in, throughout the nation. So uh, we're, we're, we're also proud of uh, all, all the different districts, large and small, because we, we, we have districts that are charters that are, that are you know, 20, 30 students up to, up to uh, Fairfax County and statewide solution back on, on this last slide here, looking at uh, the blue uh, states are actually statewide solutions, Maine, Oregon, uh, and, and Arizona. Uh, so uh, for us, you know, large to small, the solution will scale with you at whatever size you are. That's, that's important, certainly here in the state of Florida. And, and obviously for you, you have a comfort knowing that we, we serve districts this size, uh, Clay County size, uh, all the time. This is, not, this is something that really is in our sweet spot, in our wheelhouse of, of, of what we do. Uh, this, this slide is actually uh, an important one that talks about how we interact with our customers and how, uh, and we talk about customers, but it's really, we even change our vernacular a little bit. There are partner districts. We know that this, this experience is a shared experience. This is not simply, we sell you software and walk away. This affects too much. This is ERP for a school district because too many people are affected by this. So we have uh, very personally, from a cabinet level, both our, our CEO and founder, Bob Weathers, uh, myself, Chris, we're, we're all on the cabinet uh, as well as a few others. We, we monitor our satisfaction with our partner districts uh, weekly uh, through our cabinet. So that's, that's very important to us. We watch the trends on that. So uh, we're also, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's essential that you can roll out your solution and have it be adopted. Uh, and for, for that, we're uh, very excited about our, our implementation and adoption rate that we have. We're, we, we do everything we possibly can to make sure that transition, which is a stressful time in any organization, no matter how good the solution is, it is stressful. You brought up, a uh, 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 board member brought up the, the transition mm. from terms. And it's amazing how what that older system did and how amazing it was when you have to switch to a new system. It's just the feelings people have change management. So uh, ultimately, uh, we, we, we spend a lot of time in the evangelism of a solution, which is critical to, to, to gain uh, adoption. And Superintendent Davis did a, a fantastic track of engaging all levels of the organization through the vetting process. So it's not just his decision. This is a decision that's been brought through all different key members of all different uh, advocating responsibilities throughout the district. So that's, that's also uh, an important uh, aspect. 
uh, and some information about our, our staff and, and uh, our, our customer uh, retention rate. We actually, uh, over time, many many companies, they, they have an ebb and flow of losing. They, they kind of factor mm -hmm. that in. We don't. We've lost three districts, two have come back to us. So there has been one, one district that, that has actually departed from us. Uh, because when people come out of the 550 districts that we serve, you know, a majority of them, many have been on for, for 10, 15 years and have seen us evolve over time. So we're, we're not just an SIS, we're a true education platform that's been brought up a few different times, all the different uh, areas that we serve, uh, core SIS, RTI, uh, LMS, analytics, so on and so forth. Yes? Did you have a question? No, I'm oh. reading. Sorry. Oh, I'm sure. 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 <laughs> it might be difficult to read as, uh, as you look around uh, the edge, but, but the different constituencies. Having worked with focus, I'm sitting here going, does it do this and does it do that and does it do that? And does it do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's so uh, uh, from, from special education, and, and uh, of course, Jeremy brought up our synergy technology, which is our, our fundamental. Uh, uh, building block suite that we provide districts who want to license it so they can <coughs> extend the product uh, in, in directions that perhaps we haven't taken it in. But I will also say our base configurability and our solution is amazing. You can modify screens, you can change descriptors and labels and, and create your own screens all through the base product without having to engage any development platform. The development platform really provides the ability to extend and connect uh, well beyond things that we've been thought of today. Um, an important effect of this that we don't have today is when a module or a unit is created for another customer, it's not a charge. Mm -hmm. okay. that, that's, that's, a, that's an excellent point, Jerry. So uh, anytime another one of the 20 states, the 550 school districts, envisions something that they, they would like to see as part of the product, and we choose to build it, they choose to pay for it, you get that as part of the next release. We don't have 550 different forks of code managing one-off implementations. We have a single implementation, but we have configurability, so we'll allow options if something is not what, you know, we, we feel it might change the core functionality, <coughs> we provide an option so a district can adopt it or not. So within that five-year period, or whatever the contract is, mm -hmm. when you do a next release, within that five years, we automatically get an update during that time? There's no cost, uh, that's part of, that's part of our maintenance support. Sure it's not five years later, it's right. continuous. So okay. we, we do two annual releases mm -hmm. and, and with a various little updates uh, in between those, but mm -hmm. annual releases tend to have our more future-facing mm -hmm. uh, changes that we Just uh, as long as it doesn't product. change the screen too much, so people don't know what are they trying to do. <laughs> Anytime we change something that is that significant, we have what's called new feature assist. So the first time an end user comes to a particular screen and something on it has changed, we say, hey, just like you experience with Google platform, we say, hey, this has changed. And it walks you through what the change is. Awesome. So mm -hmm. this, this is a very important um, because it really, this particular slide, it tells you who we are and, and how we approach. Uh, I talked to you about our market. Now this mm -hmm. is about our product. And this is very sensitive to me because I am the chief innovation officer. So everything that goes on here and all of my energies, the majority of my energies, are, are, are really focused on the product itself. And so over time, you can see we've invested a tremendous amount in a variety of different modules as we release them. Uh, and as well as our mobile platform, which is second to none. I, I can say that with uh, confidence that there is no other product out there that has as many role-specific mobile apps that we have from administrators being, and our whole a notion and idea with our platform is not only to provide the deepest uh, possible functionality, but it's to also change the way, the way people work. It's to decouple them from the notion of having to have a laptop or, or a computer. It's to embrace the notion that everybody's mobile today. So why not have the administration, as well as many different roles in a school district, be just as mobile? from counselors to administrators to health professionals to special ed uh, professionals to, of course, teachers, parents, and students. Uh, and, and one that we've just recently uh, introduced is our kiosk view uh, as well. So front office management for handling parties and a whole bunch of self-service activity for the front office. And while at the same time, however, maintaining the integrity of the privacy of our students. Without a doubt. Nothing is stored That's on any huge. on any mobile device. Everything is interactive with the website. Although it's a uh, native experience on the device, mm -hmm. no information is actually stored there. So that's <coughs> entirely secure. Well, that would, uh, that would not fly with me. 
for the record. If it, it if that it was, was ever, if that was locally yes. stored, I would not be okay. We wouldn't even offer that feature if that was. If that and was you stopped. realize, with all due respect, you're my gauge, because if you are somebody that that would <coughs> jump, that would agree to something like this, you're the concern. Yeah. We want to keep people. Every one of you have seen me openly disagree with almost every administrator at some point <laughs> since <laughs> I've been here in one way or another. That's uh, why. Uh, <laughs> I was one of the first people to jump on Google in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. and right. um, I will tell you, I was I have some of the first Chromebooks mm -hmm. still in my home today, and um, I have not seen a product to rival that initial Chromebook launch like I have with this. Mm -hmm. This is every bit as exciting to me as that first Chromebook I put my hands on. And, and through the chair, openly, I, I mean, I respect that Jeremy is going to be the one to help us with the with the driver of this work. My job is to be to educate everyone, but it's the best tool that I've seen. I believe ever. So I'm just. We I agree too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Are you old enough to have anybody retired from the um, This was should have one slide that I we, sent. We actually. So that's a that's a very good question. Um, so our organization from our executive team is kind of bifurcated into old leadership, new leadership. Mm -hmm. And and our CEO and founder is on the north side of, uh, of the, the older older leadership. And so we, we've got, there's about three or four uh, of our executive team that are there. And we've got about six new executives that are, new is not the appropriate word. They've been in the industry for a considerable time. But younger. Um, oh, sure. And so they just had the Christmas party. I said, what is it? Uh, it's a big deal, I'm sure. But I think it's the like presentation should come at a general meeting and not be at a workshop. I think you know, this type of stuff should really be in just the general meeting. And so, from what I understand, uh, you wanted to get kind of the feelings from the yeah, members on this and then you're going to put it on the agenda perhaps in February? Yes, ma'am. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to, to look for, um, um, you know, the, the boards, the school boards, uh, you know, pulse of uh, an appetite for this uh, this type of movement. Hence the reason I asked for it to be a part of the workshop. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how it would go, whether it's at the end after the, um, after the agenda review or, or whatever. You know, I'm willing to present wherever uh, that the board wishes me to present. Yeah, I would suggest, and you have input from the board, uh, because, you know, we'll be spending money on this, and it is something totally new, that perhaps at a board meeting, I wouldn't ask them to fly back from yes, Arizona, but with this uh, presentation, yeah. I think that y'all yeah. could do this yes, presentation, or Jeremy, and uh, so that we don't have to go into the weeds yes, with the public, but I think for them to know what what this is and so that they'll know what the board is considering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. signing a contract. Well, and, and the other perspective, I understand where you're coming from, but I found this to be incredibly helpful having worked on focus and terms before oh, being able to see. Oh, I think this presentation was excellent. I didn't say that. I just said I, I think this whole presentation well, should have taken place at a general meeting yeah. where the public is there and oh, anybody well, who comes. Right. That's, well, I think I, everybody should yeah. hear the great stuff we just heard. But right. I appreciate it being here today because I feel like we can we ask are. more uh, questions and get a little bit deeper in the well, wings on it. But I think. It's mm -hmm. a, I think Ms. Karakas is right. You know, when it comes to the board for the contract, we need to have That's, a presentation yeah, like between Jeremy and absolutely. Mr. Davis that they don't have to go into every minute detail. But yeah. but um, I think it was good for us right now to be able to sit and ask maybe yeah. questions that people would say are dumb questions, but that you don't Never really want to get into on the board floor uh, into that much detail. Quick observation. Yes. Our last couple of workshops, this room has been packed. I'm wondering if we might ought to consider a different venue. So, mm -hmm. so through the chair, we're in the process of um, the old copy room mm -hmm. is uh, being revamped, and it will be able to be built. February. Really? Yes, ma'am. Trying to get it done February. February. We'll have February. a workshop in February. Very good. I got nine minutes. One very mild thing, just while we have Edge Point in here, and something that I've urged uh, the administration to make sure of, since we're boldly going forward as the first district here, we'd love to have a, a clause called the Most Favored Nations. I'm sure you're, you and your attorneys are quite aware of that. Then uh, guarantees the district uh, the best price that Edge Point has offered other government entities. Two, 
under the current state of the law and state board of education rules, this type of purchase um, and vendorship mm -hmm. need not be put to competitive solicitation to, to bid and so on and so forth. There are changes afoot, there are rule making changes afoot, they haven't been made, and uh, Jeremy and the administration, Addison, they're fully up to date on it. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. We want to say legal. That's right. So thank you. Um, last uh, last piece, and I promise you have a nine-minute hard stop. <laughs> and we talk about you know the excitement of Clay County. We have 4,800 newcomers in the next 10 years. We have, we will be building five to seven schools, and I believe that there's there's an opportunity for us to capitalize on this expansion in this county. If you look, the University of North Florida the last 15 years have changed the way their logo and their and their image, and they have a growth growth mindset. It's an invigorating mindset. And you look at McDonald's, they are, uh, I guess, they, they, they have transitioned tremendously over the years, JU, and from the left is the old, the right is the new. And Clay County Commission's office also has adjusted their logo, and then also the Jaguars last year as well. So what I want you to do is just to be, have an open mind to this uh, quick presentation from Katie, uh, you know, Katie and Katie, Josh Katie is here as well with his staff, and just to look at this and uh, just to get your thoughts on this process. Mr. Katie. Well, I think I've got eight minutes for my hard stop, and I'll try to get it, I'll try to get it done. As, I'll try to get it done in seven, um, and just to kind of set the stage. Um, my, my family's been in the district for 20 years. Uh, photography, branding. Um, my dad started the company, and we're fortunate enough to expand it through Florida and Georgia. And one of the things that we are bringing to districts and um, high schools um, in the southeast is an approach to branding. So we've uh, we've tackled this huge project, a very sensitive project in a lot of schools where we begin to evolve their look and their feel to kind of take them into the next age and to give them something that we can brand with. And so uh, Matthias is here. He's uh, joined me from Sweden from you know, seven years ago. <laughs> and uh, he's my lead designer. Yeah, and, uh, and I'll just walk through this and just, just so everyone understands, there's not a cost to this. This is just something that we do um, for the districts we work in. So it's just something that uh, we've spent a lot of time on with Mr. Davis to, to help bring the, the look to the next level. And so, of course, this is the current um, uh, logo, and we talked in deep discussion about um, how can we take this to the next level and still respect the old. We like the torch. We want to keep the, the blue and the red. And, um, we want to hold on to the in God we trust. And we kind of went through all these different conversations to get us mm. to where that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed my punch <laughs> All right. So, anyway, thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but um, we, we probably had eight or ten meetings back and forth to try to to, to find something that would look good in, um, on, on many different um, textures and, and uh, still respect the old and bring it into the new. And like I said, this is not our first rodeo uh, doing this. So of course we've and got the, it. And the sea is a, uh, the flame is a sea. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. please know that y'all can beat this up, adjust it, whatever you like to see. What? This is what? <laughs> trying to do is show you how it would look throughout the county to, to kind of wait go back that slide one more back what language is that that's <laughs> latin <laughs> you see an email you speak another language absolutely email what is that <laughs> it's, it's gibberish but piggybacking up la uh, on the last three we've done this branding for gwinnett county and cobb county and georgia a lot of very large mm -hmm. districts and so um showing of course how it would look in your different uh you know, documents and, and ideas. I'll have to get a new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to get an awful lot of new everything. Absolutely. Which so, is my concern with this is that um, I know we've had the same logo for 30 something years since no. Superintendent Wiggins was here. No. Uh, the lot, it was changed some under uh, a former superintendent. Uh, same thing. So well, that's well, what we, we added, added the in God we trust. trust. Um, but I, I worry yeah. because this is on everything. Yeah, it's so on every vehicle, it's on every school, mm -hmm. it's on every manual, it's on every template, mm -hmm. it's on the, every form, it's on everything. And I, mm -hmm. I worry about the cost right. of changing. So through the chair, uh, good point. Um, a lot of this is going to be digital. Uh, I mean, digital transition, and then we could phase out uh, the, the old logo to a new logo. 
Um, I could do a cost analysis for, for everyone to see. I, I don't believe it's going to be that, that much because mm -hmm. we're only talking about two stickers on a car. Um, and then the, as people transition their their business cards, because we got a lot of people transitioning now, I told mm -hmm. them potentially hold, but we would transition as they, as they ended and not to go spend you know, additional funding. But I only bring this to you because I think now is the time to strike. Uh, and I say to strike to be creative and be fresh and be innovative in the 21st century. And I, we try to respect the, the old logo, which we want to do, and we understand traditions. But I think this launches us into a creative age in the 21st century. I'm also concerned about the discovering endless yep. possibilities, yep. which I like. But every superintendent seems to have their own little catchphrase. Yes, ma'am. And so if that's on there we and the new superintendent comes in, then they're going to want to change the catchphrase yes. to what? whatever yeah. theirs is. What's, it would be our catchphrase. It would be, it's I mean, we would be making phrase. a decision yeah. for the district. Well, I think, uh, Mr. Davis, I personally think it's great. Uh, he had a book that uh, showed different yeah. possibilities mm -hmm. and how they kind of progressed into this. And, you know, I'd see one nice page and say, yeah, and then the next page, they would move the, you know, the flame up, down, bigger, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. and, and this is the best, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what y'all decided on, and we, I have a lot of respect for your company. Everybody's heard of Katie, yeah. but um, what I would like is for you to bring us some sort of cost analysis mm -hmm. so that we would have some, and I know it's hard because you don't know who all is going to buy shirts or caps or well, that I'd kind like of bill, they can buy those too. But yeah. I think the board should have more than one choice. So through the through the chair, well, he can, uh, if he walked you through that book, you would see. Well, maybe you should walk us through the book. Yes, ma'am. I can. There was a book that was presented to us, and it was. Um, it, we appreciate the work on it, and we just tried to, to clean the process up and to give you an opportunity to uh, to review and make any adjustments. I'm not just saying this one logo, but we can bring you the other ones yeah. as well. I can tell you openly, they're nowhere near as attractive as that. That's true. I, I think would, that discovering endless possibilities should be in Latin. I will say for the districts and superintendents I've worked with when they adopt an approach um, there's a lot of excitement around this and mm -hmm. a lot of people have your same feeling of hey do we need to spend all this money but it's amazing just the incremental change oh, starting yeah. digitally and the excitement around it a brand and recognition and anything, yeah. um, especially mm -hmm. with this building schools and adding so mm -hmm. um, Again, this is just something we do to add value to, to what we do, and, and we just are very honored to, to be part of Clay County. It's very well, cool. I it's feel very like cool. this. Um, we've had a superintendent now for two years who has brought us up to eighth in the state of Florida and uh, eight district. Uh, we are now doing, uh, looking at EduPoint things, and uh, we I feel the um, the atmosphere, for lack of a better word, in the district has changed so much in the last couple of years. I feel like this is almost like a new day in play. Um, and so if it's not terribly, terribly expensive, you know, I hope the board will entertain this. And if, if you know, some of those drawings that were on the pages from the front to the back, Maybe if you just made copies of those to yeah, show the board so out. you could kind of see the progressive expanding of the flame and moving it up, down. And, you know. Quick question. Did the legislature pass the requirement that every school has to have an yes, average trust? So if we went with a new brand of this nature, every school which, and I, I pulled out one. one of my cards just to sit there and look at this and one. look at that. Oh, and like, that I like it. I like it's it. It's clean, it's, it's mm -hmm. fresh, it's open, it's new, so we and it says in yeah. yeah. trust, and if we got a new seal for yeah. every school, yeah. exactly. we could put it in the school. Yeah. They've got their requirements yeah. done. Yeah. And yeah. those progressions, you said? Well, it was things like moving the flame to inside the circle, moving, you know, this, that. But the others were all kind of out of whack. I like uh, the clay. I think you it, it, it's, it's just the just chair. It, it is unbelievably clean. It looks. It, it looks. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, that's something you look at. And you go. Well, I do. Wow. Today I've looked at it ten times. I still go. Wow. 
you, so can, you can see it. I don't want to. I want to respect your time. I said I'd have a 10, 15 hard mm -hmm. stop. You got one minute. Th thank you so very much for um, you know you you and these items today. I know this is a difficult decision, and um, I will have accessibility to that other book. I can send it out. It's it, while the work. I appreciate it. It's nothing like what you're seeing in front of you today. You're not no, bringing is this, this to the next no, meeting no. or the one after. There's it, no rush to actually go right. forward at this point. Is, until is we're this ready. something that will oh, have you to be decide placed on the at. agenda for us to decide to change the? Uh, I believe it will through the chair. I have to be placed on the agenda, but I want to make certain that we're comfortable in doing that. Yeah, it has to be board, board voted. So, so. How soon are you looking at putting if, it on the I mean, agenda? if you have immediate feedback where this board, you know, the, bo the school board likes this logo, I can, I assume. I like it. I'm, I'm going to come out well, and say I like it. When I look at our current logo, I can't even see Clay County. Right. Well, I'm that's just not my comfortable concern. spending the money. Right. I mean, we need to watch our purse strings. And we've, we've just increased salaries, and we've given administrators raises. This is easily going to be 50000 or more to change everything in the district. Oh. It's on buses, it's on schools, it's on cars, it's on hardcover booklets, it's on students' you know, handbooks, it's on everything. It's on their yeah. planners. I mean, we're talking money. And so I, I'm really not comfortable spending that much yet on something that yeah. I feel is not a need but a want. Yeah. All right, so Mr. Chair, it would, it would, it would progress. You? We wouldn't. We wouldn't. We wouldn't spend it all right now. Okay. Yeah. Mr. I'm Davis, ahead if you would, by the January board meeting, um, it doesn't have to be done at the meeting, but just sometime between now and January, I, I don't think we're going to be doing a lot of school board stuff over the next couple of weeks. Yes, sir. Um, but if you would share with the board some sort of cost analysis so that, that, that we can understand that. And then um, I have already, sitting here, heard three board members who are ready to commit to this design, but we do need to know kind of the cost, mm -hmm. the cost mm -hmm. of it. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and then maybe, um, if, well, bring it to the February board meeting. Mm -hmm. That'll give us January. You, by then, we'll have a cost analysis. That'll give us uh, the whole month of January to uh, ask any questions or whatever and then just put it on the February agenda? Is that soon enough? There's not a big, huge hurry, is there? Or do you want to do it in hurry. January? I, I, this, I, I mean, it's crazy to go forward in January. To, to the chair, I'd, I'd say this. At the end of the day, I will take your timeline. I mean, uh, I, I do think there needs to be an alteration. I think this is a, a great opportunity to rebrand. Yeah. So, But if you could get us, well, if you could get us a cost analysis, you know, and we receive it even over the holidays, we could put it on the January agenda. Yes, that would give you time. I mean, it's up to the board. What do y'all want to do? I'm not particular. I like it. I, I January okay. January. We'll put it on the January. We can, we can look at it in two different perspectives. We can look at it as a new for the matter, new year. So, as Mrs. Stutter says, I can count to three. Well, I do have to go though. Okay. I was going to suggest okay. that we look at it possibly in the summer for the new school year. Well, I would and, say and put and not make a decision immediately. Well, you yeah, well, yeah. I mean, to make the decision, but you know, what, what I would like to ask Mr. Davis is in addition to in addition to the cost analysis, if you would also send on those pages copies of how it progressed from A to yes, G. Yes, ma'am. You know, so that they can kind of see what, what, yes, how your mind works. Mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. You got to leave? Yeah, I have a oh, Okay. Well, okay. So, uh, are, there are there any questions? Are yeah. there any? So, you got to put it on the January agenda and you'll get us this information? Mm -hmm. I can get the cost analysis. Yeah. Okay. And if not, we'll have to delay it to February. I was going to say, the transition would start. You can start with digital. Like Christmas. things like everybody in the district has right. an right. email. email. We change the letterhead, which is something that we print and do on the Put that in line. There's a lot of free digital. Okay. Questions from the audience? Anybody? Sure. Superintendent comments? No, thank you, and I hope everybody has a happy holidays. Uh, yes. Natalie yes. made some gifts in these tins and uh, some so hot cocoa. So okay. School, school board comments? Anyone? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the goodies. And the meeting is adjourned.